Hello YouTube and welcome to a quick watch review. I'm Anders from Finland and today I will be reviewing the Seiko SNZF17, also known as the Seiko Sea Urchin. So this is a rather affordable dive style sports watch. It's part of the Seiko 5 line and by affordable I mean I paid around 130 euros for my made in Japan version and oftentimes you can get the made in Malaysia or somewhere else version for a little bit less. Today I'm wearing my Seiko Sarbo 33 which I bought secondhand just a few months ago and the way I was thinking that I would do this review is in two stages. First off I'm going to give you an objective review, go through all the facts, the dimensions, what you're getting for your money and then second I'm going to give you a more subjective review of the watch. Everything that has to do with personal preference, whether I think you should buy the watch or not. And just my overall feelings about the watch. Alright, let's start the objective part by going through the watch dimensions. We have a 42mm case, uh, 44.5 if you include a crown. We have a thickness of just below 13 millimeters, uh, lug to lug distance of 49 millimeters, and we have a 22 millimeter lug which tapers down to 20 at the bracelet, then back up to 22 at the clasp. Sized up for my 17 centimeter wrist, this watch weighs in at about 150 grams so it does have quite a lot of presence on the wrist which is nice depends on your preference uh, the case the bezel the crown and the bracelet are all made out of 316L stainless steel and the bracelet itself appears to be a solid link bracelet but if you look really closely not sure if the camera is picking that up. You can see that these links are in fact folded links. You can see the fold right there in the middle, but it is however a good effort by Seiko and it, the overall feel of the bracelet is decent. It does however have hollow end links and the clasp is nothing special. Basic Seiko stamped clasp with uh, fold over mechanism and push buttons but it does the job fine no problems with it whatsoever the bracelet has a bunch of options for adjusting the size you have four micro adjustments and it does come with a bunch of links when you buy it I had to remove four links from this bracelet to get it to fit on my wrist so there's plenty of spare links to go all right next up the finishing of the watch we have a polished side and a polished crown no logo on the crown though we have a little bit of brushing on the lug here then some nice attention to detail on the bezel we have brushing here and then we have polishing in the little divots there. The bracelet is brushed all the way around except for the sides which are polished. Can't really tell the difference almost on my watch because I've used it so much that the polishing is so scratched up it almost looks like it's brushed. Then we have a 120 click unidirectional bezel 
mine is kind of a pain in the <coughs> to turn <laughs> as you can see especially with these gloves without these gloves it would be a little bit easier but it's kind of dependent on the ambient conditions and different things because some days it works like a charm and other days like this one it's pretty stiff but at least that way it won't slip on you so I guess that's that's good next up the dial layout if you look at it quickly you'll see some resemblance to the Rolex Submariner but being honest if it's a dive style watch with a black and white look I think almost every watch has some sort of resemblance to the Rolex Submariner uh, we have a nice clean look on the dial partly due to the fact that they went with the uh, black date and day wheels instead of white which blends in nicely to the dial then we have applied indices on the hour markings and we have a applied Seiko and Seiko 5 logo then we have sports and water resist 100 meters and automatic 23 joules written there and then a little made in Japan text if you happen to buy the J version which I did which is supposedly made in Japan with the K versions being manufactured in Malaysia or somewhere else oh yeah and the hands are pretty sleek I think we have a lollipop style needle second hand and then kind of a clean look with these hour and minute hands if you compare it to something like the SKX for example but ISO certified divers like the SKX usually have pretty radical hands due to the fact that that certification requires the hour and minute hand to be easily distinguishable from each other so and they have of course applied Lumi Bright to all the hour indices and the hands no loom pip on the bezel though but I think for this this price category that's just fine and here we have the loom shot as usual Seiko's Lumi Bright loom looks great I don't know if it's showing up exactly the right color on the screen but it is a bright green loom and from my own experience if you wear it when you go to sleep and you wake up in the middle of the night you will still see what the time is from this watch I think the loom is good and it's evenly applied around the dial no big inconsistencies there this watch has a flat hardlex crystal in the front and I believe that the case back is also a hardlex crystal but don't quote me on that but the front crystal is for a fact hardlex crystal and Seiko does get some hate for the hardlex crystal but being absolutely honest I have dropped this watch maybe five times sometimes on a stone floor and I think I've only gotten like one little scratch on it so I think it's pretty decent for the price there you can see the little scratch there at the half eight position no AR coating on this crystal but I think it still works just fine all right I took off the bracelet so that we can get a better look of the movement inside this watch so as it says there we have a 7s 
36 movement. Automatic movement, of course. And this is an entry level Seiko movement. Almost the same movement, I believe, as the 7S26. You see in a lot of Seiko 5 models and the Seiko SKX models. Only difference being, to my knowledge, that the crown is in the 3 o'clock position in this particular movement. So you do get a see-through case back so that you can see this mechanical movement working away <coughs> in the case. It does not hack nor hand wind, so if you pull the crown out, the second hand keeps moving. It does have a quick set function for the date and day with the day wheel being in a dual language. Mine happens to be... Well, I actually have no idea what that is. Not so cultural of me. So no hacking, no hand winding, so you're going to have to shuffle it around in order to get the movement working. But in everyday use, if you use it every day or every other day, you'll have no problem keeping this thing going. It has a 40 or 42 hour power reserve, I'm not really sure which one, but anyways, it's in that ballpark. And I haven't been following this particular watch's accuracy lately, but one year ago when I did, it was doing around, I think, minus four seconds per day, so that's pretty good for a movement of this caliber. I guess these do come unregulated from the factory, so I think they promise it to be in a range of minus 25 seconds to plus 25, correct me if I'm wrong. And you do have the op option of opening the, the screw case back and regulating it yourself. And here's the Seiko Sea Urchin on my 17 cm wrist. As you can see, it's a bit of the heftier size, but for a tool watch or a beater watch, I think it's just right. Does wear a little bit tall, but doesn't bother me. It just adds to the wrist presence. And here it is, a little further away, just so you can get an idea of the size of the watch. Alright, we are getting to the end of my first ever watch review and also my second ever YouTube video. If you made it this far with me, then I think that's awesome. Do stick around to the slideshow in the end. I'll show you this watch on these straps in some pictures. And also I have some pictures of the bracelet. And I'll show you those pictures while I tell you my subjective opinion whether I think you should get this watch or not and what I actually think about the watch. And the straps I have here are a three ring Zulu strap from cheapestnatostraps.com I think. Uh, olive green or military green NATO strap from the same site and last but not least a Bond style Zulu diver NATO strap with black hardware. Alright so let's get to the slideshow. Okay so I bought this watch about 18 months ago in December 2017 and after all this time I couldn't be happier with my decision. I think for $150 this watch is an absolute bargain and it's a perfect first mechanical watch if you want to get into watch collecting and also it's a perfect do-it-all watch 
if you just want to add a tool watch or an everyday watch to your already sizable collection. The 100 meter water resistance of this watch adds to its overall practicality. I know a lot of people are uncomfortable with swimming with a watch that doesn't have a screw down crown or isn't a certified diver watch but I can show you after dozens of times swimming with this watch that it keeps the water out just fine. This watch being a black watch with white details adds to the overall versatility as watches of that color code usually go well with a whole array of different kinds of straps. Some people like to dress these up with leather straps and some people like to dress these down with NATO and Zulu straps like I do and some people like to keep them casual with bracelets of different kinds. Of course with a entry level watch like this you do get some downsides. No watch is perfect and with Seiko's entry level models those problems are probably quality control issues with the chapter rings and the indexes sometimes they're not properly aligned and Seiko is also known for somewhat cheap quality bracelets in their entry level watches and this watch also has a little bit of a jingly jangly bracelet but that being said I truly do think that this watch is a great do-it-all watch you can have it in almost every situation except maybe something very formal with a suit. If you made it this far in my first ever watch review I think that's fantastic and I want to thank you for your time. I hope you found this video useful. I know when I was getting into watch collecting I used to watch and I still do watch a lot of YouTube videos and watch reviews and they helped me a great deal when making buying decisions and I hope to do the same to the watch community with these kinds of videos. If you found this video useful please like the video and also subscribe to my channel if you wish to see more content like this. This has been Anders from Finland and Please comment down below if you have any proposals on how to make my videos better or any other type of question you have regarding watches or anything else. Anyways, thanks for your time and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.